All right. I have this Visual Studio open. I'm creating a new Blazor web app. Next. And let's call it Blazing Blog version 2. So V2. Next. And this time I have installed .NET 8. I have updated my Visual Studio 2022. So right now I have .NET 8. Authentication type, we are going to use individual accounts. After that, interactive render mode. So for this, what I already said that for all the public pages, the home page, login page, uh, category, blog post and details page for all those pages, we are going to use the static server side rendering. But for admin part, the creating and managing categories, managing blog posts for all those so creating blog post and uh, listing blog post, quick grid paging for all that stuff. We are going to use interactive server mode. Okay, then per page component. Yes, because we will need it on two or three components only. And then we can create. So let's let it including sample pages. We will delete those pages so I'm just creating it cool so project is created so we can see we have these components and in components we have accounts folder and in accounts here is the complete uh, identity implementation so we have all those login logout two factor register and then manage pages so all these pages we will clean up almost everything because for this particular application we need simple login but we will use identity for sure but we don't need all these pages so we are going to clean these up later but right now let's see it and then we have this layout we have layout main layout which is the main layout for our application then we have pages in pages we have auth page counter which is interactive page and then home page which is static server side rendered and weather is also static server side rendered with streaming rendering true and then we have in data we have complete uh, entity framework setup for ASP.NET identity we have application user which is a subclass of identity user. Let me zoom it a bit. Okay. We are going to modify this. And then we have these initial migrations to create all those uh, identity tables. So we have ASP.NET role, ASP.NET use, users, role claims, all these tables. Cool. So now before doing anything first let's try to run the project so that we can at least see that this is running there is no issue in this okay so the app is here right now this page is server side rendered so we can see all the data then we have this counter page which is interactive server so there should be a signal or connection for this particular page so you already know all of this if there are a ton of videos and I also created a video before this so for in which I explained all these render modes then we have weather auth required we have this login page register page so all this is working okay cool now in this particular project I'm going to use this template okay so this time what i thought let's not uh, design everything from scratch so we'll write all our code from scratch till end but for this design only this html cs and all these things i have found this pretty good template i like this template very much so i'm going to use this template in our app and i'm going to link this in the description box if you want to check it out it is from mundane theme and you can get it from here you can download it and you can track around okay so for this i have downloaded this so the way 
why I chose this route because I'm not a professional designer, but I know a lot of CSS, HTML, but uh, the designing everything from scratch, it takes a lot of time. So this time what I thought, let's get this template, add this, and then we'll start modifying this template as per our need. And then we'll extract HTML, CSS from it, and we'll create our blazer components and then start working on all those. Okay. So let's add this. I have downloaded this template. So I have it here. It has this assets folder. No, I don't know how can we zoom it. Okay, let's like this. We have this has this assets folder which has CSS, IMG, JSS, CSS. And it has these about docs article category index pages, these pages. Okay, so index page is the home page, which we have this right now here. Then we have category page, which is category wise blog posts. Then we have detail page, which is this article page. So these pages we are going to use this docs is actually the documentation of this. This is not, we are not going to use this one. And this about, this is related to this theme. So this is also, we are not going to use about. This is kind of the detail page only. So we are going to use index, category and article, these three pages. Okay, so first thing, let me add this template to this current project so that we have a reference to this. Okay, so what I'm going to do, I will simply copy this, copy, and then I'll go in here, open current, blazing block two, in here, I'm going to create a new folder and I'll call it template, and I'm going to add it here. <coughs> Let's cut everything and add directly add to this template folder and then remove this folder. Fine. Now we have this here. Now we can add this as a solution item so that we can uh, see those directly that folder directly here. So I'll say so add solution folder and I'll say template. And in here I'm going to add existing item can we add folder directly no okay that means let's add it directly inside project delete this not rename remove oh my god remove okay and then again, go to containing folder and template. Let me cut it and paste it in here. Okay. We have it here. Cool. So now we can check this and we can start adding the pages as per our need. So first thing what we'll do the CSS assets folder. Let's copy this assets folder and add it directly to our triple W root folder because all these assets are going to come from here only CSS, JS images, all these. Okay. We are not going to use SCSS so we can directly delete this folder. Just delete it from here. Or maybe let's let me do this. Hmm. Hmm. Okay, never mind. Let's clean it up. Fine. After assets, hmm. FCSS vendor main. Okay, that is fine. One thing is it is using 
if you go to main.css it is using bootstrap 4.1.3 so it has that bootstrap here only as a part of this main.css so the bootstrap we have as a part of this uh, .NET 8 Blazor template we don't need this one so we can delete this just delete this okay then let's see the index page which is the templates index page if we see it here if you look around it we have these things this uh, font font awesome and then google font and then main.css as a part of main header right so we can simply copy this and go to our layout which is in component and layout but before layout we need to add it as a part of header so head section of our html so for this we have our app.razor page in components folder so here is our head section so here we are going to add all those things here now we can remove this bootstrap because we are not going to use it we are going to use this main.css okay now i checked we are not using this font awesome this i checked so we can directly remove this there is no point of having it here because we are not using it cool after this if we go to the very bottom of the body there we'll see we have all these scripts so let's copy all these scripts go to our app.razor and let's add it these at the very bottom okay first thing we need to remove this slash dot slash it will use now jquery popper bootstrap functions so bootstrap dot main jquery and popper all these three we are actually using if you remember when i showed you the template let me show you again so this is the template all that those uh, scripts those are being used just for this functionality right on the responsive side on mobile version on the smaller screens we have this menu so this navbar toggle up for this section so when we click on it it opens up and when we click on it again it simply hides so just for this functionality all these three scripts are there so what i mean is we can achieve that using normal blazor or normal javascript so we can remove these three things we are just cleaning up everything okay cool save everything now functions.js let's check what we have in this js so if you go to functions.js in here we have this jquery document ready window.scroll so this top navbar we are actually whenever we are scrolling and if the scroll position is greater than 50 that means we scrolled 50 pixel at that time it is simply adding these two classes scrolled nav and padding on y axis 0 to the top navbar let's see it so it's here and right now if we go here we have this navbar which is this top navbar okay now if i scroll it just keep an eye on this menu bar if i scroll it you saw that they are simply uh, minimizing the padding right when we scroll so this padding is getting removed that's what it is doing so and they are using jquery for this we are not going to use jquery at all we will achieve this using pure javascript so right now let's comment this out we'll implement this okay cool now let's do this whatever we have in index.html let's try to add the things on our main uh, on our page our blazor components okay so if i collapse everything 
we have these sections first inside body we have this nerve bar okay this nerve bar so this nerve bar belongs to if we go to our components layout and main layout inside this we have this nav menu right this nav menu so this is the actual nav bar what we are going to have so let's remove all the contents from here or maybe let's do this let's create a new component here because we need something from this component this nav menu nav menu we'll look at it later then we'll fix it so let's create a new razor component and we'll call it top nav bar okay and let's paste everything what we have in nav menu there cool after that let me pin this here after nav bar we have this header section which is the this main hero section geometry section so this belongs to index page only but before that we have this footer section so for this footer section let's create a new component in our layout folder so we'll call it footer and let's add that html here tool now we have this main and header section these two sections so we can simply copy these two sections and let's go to our home page which is going to be this in pages home.razor so let's remove all the content and add that html here save everything now on main layout whatever we have before this blazer error ui we we will have this blazer error ui here but before this everything we will remove everything we don't want all of it right instead what do we want first thing we want top never right because we are mimicking it the same as we have this index.html so first thing it had that navbar okay this top navbar after that it has all the content which is body for our layout so after top navbar we'll say add the red body and after that we had footer like this so save everything now on this top navbar let, let's try to run it first if everything is still looking nice and if we can see these new changes or no let's check it okay it is coming and we have something great we can see the header we can see all this content and we can see this footer cool and on the smaller screens we can see this uh, it changed to this toggle button menu bar but it is not working right now because we removed all the jquery and bootstrap js javascripts we will implement this but right now we can see the design that means the at least design is working so we have all the css we have images we have everything set up right okay let's continue next thing what we are going to do let's check one more page after index page we had category page which is actually category wise blog post right so in pages folder let's create a new folder not folder create a new component this we will say let's say category posts okay this is category post page so we can say at the rate page and right now let's use the same convention they are using if we check this index page this top nav bar here it is article.html they are using this name right so we'll change this for us let's use category word just category we'll modify it later to make it dynamic as per the current category but right now let's have it like this only and then go to top navbar and let's change this dot slash article.html all these two just category okay 
save everything and now we have this category html now if we will see first thing we have same navbar then we have main section then we have footer section so this main navbar this is already a part of our top navbar which is a part of main layout so that means this is already set up footer is already set up we just need this main content so let's copy this go to our category post page and in here let's add this i pasted it directly cool now let's check detail page so for this let me create a new razor component and here i'll say blog post detail page right blog post detail and let's add a page which we will right now we'll say details we'll modify it later but right now let's have it like this only and now if we check our template there we have this article.html right so in this article.html first section same we have never then we have this header then we have this main and then we have this footer to so this navbar and footer we already moved these to our layout now we'll get this header and main section copy this go to our blog post details page and let's add it here okay and now in order to reach to this page let's go to our category posts page or maybe home page where is home page home page and here we have the these things right when we click on the adding of any blog post it should go to our details page so let me add it a couple of other places so that we can at least see that we can reach to the detail page and that is displaying the correct design and then we'll make that dynamic okay on home page we have this so let me run it now let's see if we have these two pages also up and running with this dummy content of course home page this is fine and from category you see we can click on it and we are on category page so on category page design is perfect now let's go to the, uh, that detail page so that was index dot html because that is a part of current navbar we'll fix all the links right now let's go to the detail page so if we click on here it will go to the detail page and we can see the detail page as well we have this uh, subscription box we have image heading category name username user image and we have this read next related blog post so everything is fine that means we successfully integrated the template into our blazer application right there is only those two things first we need to work on that navbar on the responsive smaller screens we need to work on this one and then we need to fix the javascript which came with this uh, this template which is this functions.js right we need to fix this before that let's see this vendor in css vendor file we are not using it at all so let's delete this images right now we'll use these images but later on we'll delete this because we are going to get all our images from our blog post only right and in js also in vendor we have all these share prism Popper, Bootstrap, AOS, we can delete everything. Cool. Now we just have this main.css and we have this function.js. That's all. Let's run, check it first if everything is still same. We deleted those folders. So it is, it should not break anything, but let's see. Cool. We have this, we have category page and we have detail page cool let's work on this javascript so this jquery document dot ready it's equivalent in javascript is actually dom content loaded event on document 
So what do we do? We'll say document dot add event listener and DOM content loaded. Okay, then this function, we don't need to use anything. We can remove this. Like this. And now we can add our logic and our logic is going to be first. We need to get access to this top nav, right? This is a class and we need to access this. So here we'll say const, let's call it top nav only. So here we'll say document dot document dot get elements by class name because this is a class, right? So top nav and from there we will access the zeroth element because when we say class name it returns a list of elements and we need the first element which is the only element right now ideally it should have id but let's go with the flows let's have it like this only now we have this top nav then to be safe side let's check if we have top nav <clears throat> so this is if top nav is not null Okay, now when this is after this, there was window scroll event. So let's add it. So here we'll say window dot scroll and we'll define our event handler here. Okay, so here first thing we need to get access to this. They had this dollar this dot scroll top. So this we can check if window dot scroll y this is the scroll top basically so we have access to this if this is greater than 50 then add these glasses and if that's not the case that means else so here we want to remove those glasses like this okay so adding and removing class using javascript is pretty simple so we have top nav dot class list from here we can simply say add and then we can pass comma separated parameter so these two classes i want to add and here i want to just remove these classes so top nav dot class list dot remove and like this and we can remove this so this is actual equivalent of this jquery code which we had earlier right so right now because we remove jquery dependency from our project so we can directly remove this and we are good now cool after this we have one more issue not issue we need to have that toggle menu bar on smaller screen so for that let's do this let's create a function here so we'll call it toggle menu. Okay. It will get an event E. On this, we'll say E dot target. And this E dot target is going to be the button. First, let's see what happens when we click on that uh, that button which toggles the nav bar on smaller screen. Let's see what change. What changes, then we'll make the same change in here. So we have it here and if we check this is the actual template now if i go to the smaller screen and if i check it here so let me make it side by side so that it looks plain and we can see both of the things cool so this is the main button this navbar toggler and this is the actual thing now let me zoom it. Hmm. This is the button. This is the Dave class navbar collapse collapse where the complete menu items are. So these two things changes. When we tap on this, do you see something is changing? Right? Let's see what is changing. So when this is collapsed, we have on this button, we have navbar toggler and collapsed class. And when we click on it, the collapsed class is getting removed right 
this area expanded true and false this we can simply skip this is semantics this does not have to do anything with the code or look and feel but if you want you can use this as well you can add uh, use the uh, attributes of elements using javascript you can modify those but see let's see so apart from this navbar toggle so when we are clicking this this is the code uh, this is the button where we will apply that click that toggle menu uh, function which we are right now writing right so it means it should toggle this collapsed class it should remove and add it right so let's do this so this e dot target this is going to be that button only on here we can access the class list and on this we are going to use toggle which is a method of this class list so add and remove we saw add adds the classes remove removes the classes toggle is just adds the classes once then if we toggle it again it will remove the classes and it will add those again so it toggles basically and the class we are looking for is collapsed right so if you go to top navbar we can verify this on top navbar we have this button this is collapsed class right good cool first part is this then there is one more thing which is getting changed let's see what that is okay now this div it has navbar collapse and collapse then if i add it it has this show class right collapse show collapse show is gone right so that means we need to add that show class actually toggle that show class as well right so on this we have this id nav bar color 02 let's see it go to top never and this is the section right first thing let's change it nav bar color 02 let's call it top nav bar menu something like this or menu wrapper something like this now we have this id and we can access this id from here so here we'll say document dot get element by id and this is the id okay we can store it in a variable so we'll say navbar wrapper something like this and on this navbar wrapper we can do the same thing class list dot toggle and then the, we are toggling the show class right or if you don't want to add this to a variable you can directly do this on this document dot get element by id like this and this will also work fine let's see it in action if it works in our blazor uh, project so i'm running it right now let it come okay it came and it's not working and what the issue is let's see what the issue is if we go here check here never collapsed it is not working right let's see why it is not working also we don't have any error here save everything functions.js we are loading this right let's okay let's do this let's add alert here alert so that we can see that this file is getting loaded functions.js something like this save run functions.js okay it is working then how come this is not working and this thing is also not working right let's see if it has everything updated network okay let me refresh it functions let's go to js we have functions.js and if okay there is some error okay what is the error dot extension dot get url content dot json what is it webpack content dot json what am i missing 
okay let's first check we have this preview response if we check okay we have this so everything is fine oh my god my bad this toggle menu i'm not calling it right so we need to call it top never this button data toggle collapse and data target this we don't need both of these because these are related to bootstrap js which we are not using we can have all other things and here we'll say on click and we can simply call our toggle menu method and here and it needs an event which is default so we can pass this event and we can save it before this let's change this name so we'll say blazing blog v2 and then this index.html let's set it just slash and this index.html let's say slash and the first one let's say home save everything let's try to run it okay app is here alert is here and now we can see it you see we can see the menus and it should work right cool so that means this thing is working the py0 that is not working right let's check on this top neighbor okay what is it those classes are not getting applied nothing is happening let's see if we are missing something there as well functions dot chase dome content loaded top nav top nav everything looks fine window dot scroll okay this should should be on scroll save everything and let's read it okay and this you see this main header the main nav bar let's see when we scroll those classes getting applied and removed right cool so that means now we have successfully integrated the template into our blazer application and everything is working so we are good to go now we can start working on the now we don't need to connect to template now we can start working on our actual our blazer components and actual logic okay